My biggest dream is to be a heavyweight champion of the world and be known. I want to be a boxer. So either semi-pro or even make it pro if I can. So, yeah, well, I have to work hard. If someone took boxing away from life, I don't know what I'd do. I think it would just be really boring. I wouldn't have anything to do. <laughs> Again. If, if boxing was taking out my life, I don't know what I'd actually do. I don't know. I'd actually have nothing to do. I'd just sit at home on the PlayStation all day. I want to boxing away from my life. And I won't be doing anything in my spare time because I go straight from school. And if I won't be doing that, then I'll probably be going out and doing nothing helpful. Just kind of uh, intrigued me because it's not really like a popular sport for girls. So I just kind of wanted to try it see what it was like. I've been training for several weeks. <laughs> I'd been a boxing coach prior to this and many, many times I'd heard people saying uh, if it wasn't for boxing I'd be in prison or I'd have gone down a different path. So I suggested to the fire service that we could take this building that we're in now which was a building just for storing old fire engines and we could start up a boxing club. My name is Michael Dillon. I was a firefighter for 30 years and now I'm retired. We as firefighters were working in this area and I work at this, this station uh, where this, this boxing club is um, situated. And we were constantly being uh, abused and attacked by young people in this area. The fire service recognised that about 95% of our work was coming from young kids in this area. So they tried to engage, but we're a fire service. They, we couldn't engage. You know, every time we tried to engage with them, you know, we were just middle-aged white guys, you know, who lived elsewhere. We had no contact with them. Initially, they um, resisted the idea, uh, but when I pointed out that boxing as a sport mirrors the values we as the fire service had, uh, discipline, respect and courage, and that we would be acting as mentors, examples, so that we could guide these young people, form a relationship and guide these young people, um, they got on with the idea, tentatively give us a, the, this building and from there it's developed, we started off with just a few kids and then once we opened the gates, it was like an avalanche and we, we've got full gyms all the time. I was a rescuer for for 30 years, that was that was my chosen profession. Being in a club like this is just a continuation of that. You know, the effect you have on some of these young people walking through the doors is life-changing. The last 10 years of that service I, did, I worked here in this boxing club, and I honestly believe that I did more rescues in this club than I ever did working in, working at, you know, on, on the pumps. You know, because um, a rescue isn't just about bringing someone down the ladder, or you know, extricating them from a car collision. Um, sometimes it's just being in the right place with the right words, and sometimes it's just offering a kid a hand up. If 
thrills you get, it's like, you can't explain it. It's like, when you're actually fighting, they're genuine which is weird. Because when the other person's hitting you, you don't feel it. And then after the fight, you maybe feel it. And like, compared to sparring, it's a whole different thing. Because sparring, you, you're doing it with your mates, so you wouldn't hit them as hard. And it's tactical, you'd be, you'd be nice to them. You don't hit them, but you won't hit them as hard. With a fight, you have to go all out. And you don't stop until the referee tells you to stop. That's, that's all about trying to prove him wrong. Four shots, power! 